Okay, let's get started at 6 o'clock. This is our work session for uh, January 4th, 2017. And we've got a couple items. should be short and sweet. Uh, first is a community funding process. Mr. Robbie. Yep. Um, what I wanted to, to present to council is what we've sort of agreed to as far as the process and uh, qualifications that we'll be using for the community funding um, application requests. Um, first of all, I put together a proposed timeline um, for which this process would start. And that's probably not as important, but what's probably important is to make sure that council makes me aware of potential applicants that I may have possibly missed or should no longer be on this list. Although I will say that when I get back next week, we're gonna do a press release for the paper and let people know that we're soliciting applications, but it's these people here, as long as we leave everybody on the list, that we will directly contact with regard to an application. Um, but in case there's somebody we miss, at least I have one. Do you? Okay. Yes. I'll keep that, um, and then I'll put it down because you'll need to give me a contact information. Boys and Girls like Club of Chaffee County. Okay. They're do you have uh, contact information and stuff uh, on that, Eileen? Yeah, it's right here in town. Uh, okay. Uh, I called them today. They served 468 children okay. during 2016. Okay. Um, okay. Mr. Robbie. Is yeah. That supposed to be anticipate or anticipate <laughs> art under so why the art walk isn't that supposed to be anticipate yeah yes. it is. Oh, is it anticipate yeah, crazy name huh? yeah well. yeah the other thing is that uh, the land trust has changed its name yes they did central yeah. central conservation who remembers exactly what that change is do you remember jan yeah, it's Central Conservation. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Something. <laughs> yeah, Central Colorado Conser Conservation. I'll, I'll look it up and send it to yeah, you. Yeah, if you but could. That's the wrong name. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I needed you guys to and, look at for sure. And I know you have more down there. Could you bit. scroll it up a little bit? And this is not final. Other people oh, can no. Yeah, this no, that's just why just I'm going to put it in the paper and let people know in yeah. case we're missing somebody or somebody mm -hmm. new showed up or whatever. But I just, you guys have this insider knowledge that I don't have. And I know when Melody and I met and met Cheryl just the other day, I just said, sure. you guys are the ones that will, these are the people that, I, with the names you're giving me, we will just send an application to and then we'll do the open advertisement. The original uh, ordinance or resolution on this. <clears throat> had indicated that this was on a year-to-year -year basis. Yes, it is. And, and they couldn't do it for two years, and that's when I wanted to ask about that Boys and Girls Club because we have, as long as I've been here, we've always given them a certain amount of money. And yeah. uh, I don't know how this new deal is going to be written, but maybe you can tell me. Well, I think that, um, you know, obviously we want to review all applications fairly, and I think that... You know, Cheryl and Melody and I are going to have to review them and, you know, take a very small amount of money and split amongst a very great number of causes. It's not uncommon to what I do on the Gaming Impact Commission or when I used to sit on that special highway committee. Um, you know, you have to make tough decisions. But one of the things that you try to look at is that whether program sustainability is a possibility because we don't want to become an entitlement. We want to try to strive with the, any dollars that we give to make the organization better. And there may be some qualifications that need to go with any funding. Um, so I don't know that there's any guarantees for anybody. Council can obviously, council will make the final decision. Um, the three of us will attempt to make recommendations. And if you guys feel that there's some organization that deserves a level of funding, that's well within your purview. I sure can't tell you yes or no on that. Yeah. And I wanted to raise one issue, too, is I don't want there to be any kind of conflict of interest, but um, I am on the spot board. Yeah, no, I know. And so, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. So, well, when we go through the reviews, we, obviously Mel Melody and I are aware of that, so we won't allow you to advocate for them much. <laughs> In, um, and we won't decrease their funding just because you're associated with them either. <laughs> She tried there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in previous years, we did have upper limits 
Okay. Uh, have you considered that? I haven't because I haven't seen the nature of the requests yet. Okay. I think, you know, uh, it's going to be tough. If That's I not can, very much money to my, go through yeah, a lot of different people. Yeah, it's not a lot. And, uh, and I just got word, official word, um, that, you know, we could sponsored that grant for the Youth Services Corps, and they got turned down for their money. So uh -huh. How yeah. much was that? I don't remember what that grant was for, Mike. I don't remember. Is that that big Inspire grant? Is that the one it was? You guys just approved us this we did the resolution to support some time ago. I don't remember how much that was for. And I think it was five grand. Does that sound right? I don't know. The other issue that I was thinking about was um, in the past we have had two rounds during the year and we put the bulk of the money into the first round so that all of these organizations could know what they might be getting in support from the city to help them plan their year out. But I think in the past, didn't we hold back about 5,000 for a second round um, for issues that come up with groups? It seems like we always get some last minute uh, situations that people bring to council. I, I would try to refrain from that and I think since we are doing these direct mailings and we're advertising it I think that people need to know up front that we as a one-stop shop especially like say you only have 30,000 bucks it don't go very far um, and so I think we're gonna have to analyze that may be ultimately our recommendation to council but we're gonna have to analyze that I think the whole part of this was to get this in one-stop shop so that everybody knew that they had an equal chance. What you're trying to eliminate is the people walking up to the podium at the last minute and saying, hey, I need money, and you guys say, oh, geez, we're on camera. We don't want to look like crap and say no. It always happens to us. That's well, I've, I'm sure, but if you get, you know, we <clears> have <throat> the same problem with Canyon. You get them regimented as to what your process is, and they know the expectations. We're even putting in the letter how much money we have available, and so they're very aware that if you put an application in for twenty five thousand dollars you're probably not going to get funding or at least not to the full extent in there for a provision for an emergency or something that comes up <clears throat> I kind of have well I think council has that authority at any time yeah. that, I just historically I, you know, that's exactly what happened yeah happened. and I think it's a bad ironically, practice but ironically I, I it became a uh, a loose extra change kind of situation yeah. and, and I like to, to let you know council the councils know the same thing. Staff, we don't have a lot of money, just free, willing. You know, everything should be dedicated for a source. So, you know, we don't even barely contingency fund for ourselves. So maybe there should be something in your letter then stressing that, that this will be the only opportunity during the year and make that very, very clear because we get so many requests throughout the year. Okay, I agree with that, Charles. And you know, another aspect on maybe on some of these groups that are maybe a little bit larger, whatever. And if, if, if they were requesting money, maybe be for a specific project or something. Yeah. Uh, well, you're asking yeah. them. You know, you know. Sometimes we're supporting them to the extent that that's their matching funds for larger yeah. dollars too. Yes. So I mean, they're saying that in the application. Your application's pretty good, I good. think. Good. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that's one, if I remember the criteria, that's actually probably one of the qualifiers. Your criteria is very good, too. So I like the, the outline of what you guys have used before, and so I just stick to your guns and keep it that way. I think everybody will be a lot happier. I think the mistake we made the last time was we made a limit of 5000 yeah. And almost everybody applied for it. <laughs> yeah. And see, I so I, I like not it's, it's doing tough. That. It's tough to do that. And... and it, I don't think the committee's got their work cut out for them. I think it's not going to be easy. I think there's going to be a lot of demand. And like, say, if if the one folks didn't get their grant for five grand, that's five grand out of thirty. It doesn't leave a whole lot left. So we have to be very careful with how we spend the money. And yeah, it got it got to where it was working up what fifty, sixty thousand one year. It seemed like it yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> and even we well had with that. this one time. and with this list here, I don't even think that's very much. I you know that's a list that we had. Fairly close to what we in Canyon, we gave out to 120, 130,000 a year. I know our amount's very, very low still, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not including our chamber. Well, you think we ought to raise it? No, I wouldn't yet. 
I think, I think we should I, look at it for future years. I think you ought to, to look at it where can. you have and look at the intent, look at the quality of the applications, obviously. And if there seems to be a trend line that says it needs to be more, then you'll have to evaluate that as a council and decide where your priorities are. And, you know, we always, as administrators, I'm always going to tell you, you look inward first and make sure you're fully funding the things that you want with the city first before you worry about sharing mm -hmm. your money. But I think one thing we have to recognize is most of these nonprofits are really contributing to um, to the health of the community, and, and they're doing a lot of good things. And because a lot of this money goes to cash matches, yeah. you know, it's it's projects for the community. Well, and that's why we talked, we called them community agencies. And basically, they were replacing services that the city, city didn't provide, but for do, the betterment yeah. and the quality of life of the citizens of... Canyon City or Fremont County. Okay, so does everything else look fine? I've got your notes here, or, or uh, Christian's got your notes as far as the additions. Um, if you can get me that change of the name, Cheryl, and then also the contact. What was the time frame again? I, I don't have my. Uh, go back up, Christian. There. February 10th. Yeah, it's going to be. It's um, it's out there a little ways, and and and. Um, Quite truthfully, I may not be here for a lot of it, oh, yeah. but at least we can get the process started. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't don't make any guarantees yet. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I know I, you I didn't can... fire me last night, but I can still work on you. Uh, a <laughs> <laughs> couple I had, Chamber of Commerce, Habitat for Humanity. Do, did we budget fireworks already in the budget? I for believe, the 4th of July? Yeah, yeah I do. believe That's so. Okay. And Habitat the other thing, for Humanity, I don't remember anything for them, though. Okay, and then uh, the other thing that comes up is people wanting to use the parks for and waive the fees, and then they used to take the money out of this. No, I don't agree with that. So that's what we used just to waive do. the fees. That's all you're doing. Can I ask you a question, sir? He brought up fireworks, and I want to bring up Christmas decorations. Oh yeah, we didn't have any this I mean, year. That was about <laughs> the shabbiest I ever seen. Uh, all we had was the hearts, I think. You know, and uh, well. Oh, well, we had the mountain, and we had, and the mountain. had, the mountain. Then you had, and then you had Riverside, which was gorgeous. Well, yeah, yeah but, but as far as we you're used talking to have it downtown. on the poles and oh. things like that. But isn't that a problem with uh, that's a problem with Excel? Yeah, with Excel, not supposed to be anymore. Yeah, but I'm told, and if you go to Alamosa, and if you go to some of these other Alamosa's places, different. I don't well, remember. Well, they may be different, mm -hmm. but I know they own their own poles. That, but uh, I was told that they had made. A concession on that because there was some I'd have to look because I think Bob and I did talk about this. I don't remember if he put something in the operating budgets and the streets or not for that. Well, that's what anyway. I'll think. double check it and see. It come I think, I think, thing. huh? We I have, don't believe it came into this community. Thing I would at not. All, but no, I think that's a city endeavor. I, I think that's a city endeavor. I think if council wants to support it, it needs comes out of the streets budget. What he was, what he's working with, I think, is the new lights. We're getting new lights that are LEDs, I think. Oh, oh, the silhouette lights? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I talked to Kevin about that. But I don't, it's not coming out of this, mic. It's coming out of just the regular right. operating that's, budget. That's an agreement with well, Excel. you know, uh, on some of that deal, the light poles may be there, but they're putting uh, little uh, Christmas trees in the planters and that sort of thing. Oh. And I really would like to see it. There's a lot of people that travel from the front range Absolutely. just to see this mountain. No, I, it's gorgeous. And, uh, and I asked Vicki Sue about it, but they were going to bring it up at the uh, business meeting. Yeah. Uh, if you find that there is some in there, would you let me know? Yeah, I will. I mean, but it, but if the business, I guess my opinion, and I, I would still defer to council, but if I think of the business alliance and came specifically with a request for decorations, I think that that should be a general support item and not out of this right. fund here. Right. I agree. Because I really do think that's a city thing. Just for the benefit of the community. I think it would, pretty. Be, it would be helpful if you check with Excel use. because I think we still have a problem. Oh, yeah, oh okay. Well, I remember Kevin saying something about working they with them about getting changes. We had the opportunity to buy those lights back in the downtown oh, did you? district. They were paid by the yeah. by the uh, businesses. Well, and I know Kevin and I had a talk because we did the transition to the LED lights in Canyon, but they just fogged over so quick the lenses just didn't hold up the light. The glass lenses did on the incandescents. And then the same thing happened in Burlington, too. Univista had a mix. And how did those ones on the mountain show up so well? 
I don't know. <laughs> LED lights. <laughs> They're LED. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so then you but didn't you just say they were LED? Yeah, it wasn't that the lights didn't shine. It's just that the the lenses, because they're all clear, they just fog over within the first year. The UVs come down, and they keep on saying that they changed the content of that so that the UV rays, but it doesn't work. And that was Excel? Hmm? That was Excel? No, we did that ourselves down there. Hmm. We didn't partner with the power company. We got Excel a Excel owns our lights in a crazy way. Yeah, and downtown, see, when we redid downtown, we bought a, we took all the power poles over in the, in the circuits, so. Mm. Okay. I found another one, the Alliance of Domestic Abuse. You're going to get me that too, Cheryl? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well. We'll probably find a bunch more new ones. Yeah, if you do, <laughs> yeah, just let me know, because I'm not going to, you can see, I'm not sending out packets for at least another couple of days or so. Okay. We'll do the public notice next week in the paper. And then um, if you guys come up with something, just please not only give me the name, but if you can get contact information, because we'll either email them out or mail them out. Will you put that in the website to uh, notice? Yeah, because I'm going to put the, no, I think we'll put the documents in there with the criteria and stuff. So they could put a lot off. <coughs> okay. Sweet Trump. That's all I had on that. Ready to move forward with the other? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have interviews coming up next Friday, and I had previously given you a set of questions. Um, I, before we start, I want to preface it by the fact that this is a difficult discussion to have because we don't want the applicants to know what it is you have planned for them. So it's very tough to discuss questions when you film your meetings, which is the first for me since I've been doing this sort of off? stuff huh you want to turn it off i have no problem with that well, I, I, or maybe we could just use number such and yeah, such i think we can use number such and such, such or, and or generally you could just say steve you did a wonderful job we're ready to go <laughs> um, uh, and that's okay too except for i wanted to point out cheryl and i did talk a little bit and i didn't disagree with her that rephrase a couple of questions which i did on number four and number 11. so please take a look at that um and I didn't have any re problem with the restructuring of those questions. I thought Cheryl's ideas were very good. You and said actually, seven? Uh, Four 11. and 11. 11. 11 was regard to personnel, and I liked hers better than the generic why you have. And I thought it was more appropriate to some of the situations that we've had here. This is a before and after, if you want to look at it. Before and after? Yeah, this is what it gave us, and this is what it changed to. <clears throat> so. I've, I've pretty much reviewed these questions, the ones that you give me. I'm fine with them, but uh, if we see them, we change them, we get a hold of you and we change it just without the council's approval, like you did with Cheryl, or what? No, actually, the, I'm bringing it up to you because she sort of the council here, so that yeah, you could so that you them. know, I have to have pack, I have to have packets done tomorrow before I leave town at nine o'clock. I got you. So this is her so, that you brought forward. Uh, yeah, I just wanted you to see them because they didn't really change the intent of the question. They're both related to the same subject. It's just I changed the language a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So uh, when we ask these questions, it uh, looks like I start off with number one, and then how are we going to go? Generally, how do we want to do this? Generally, what works the best, or though, you know, the truth is you only have three people, is that you're going to be sitting in the Mount Methodist room. You're going to be, um, you know, you're going to have one table, one person at the end, uh, spot at the end for the applicant, is that, Jim, you would start, and then you would just progress to the next person in line, and maybe would ask the question. Then when number two comes up, you would do start on yours and then say it was Mike and Melody, then Melody would start with the question thereafter. And then if it was the same, you'd start with your question and then Aunt Eileen would finish it up. And that way you're staggering the questions. Now, I have some seen some people um, that want to associate a name with a question. And that's okay too, except for what I like is that if you're staggering up, you're not asking the same question, you become engaged. You stay engaged because it's a different set setting, you're not tuning out. 
And I, I think it's just more effective. That's just my okay. philosophical opinion. And, and I hope that if someone answers a question and we would like some clarification to their answer, that we can request that. Yeah, actually, yeah. It's, a, it's a lot more fluid than you and, believe. Yeah. Um, you know, just out of fairness, you all have to ask these questions of every one of the applicants. But what, what you have is you have an opportunity after they get done with the questions to say, okay, well, I have a follow-up or I see in your application, or I see in the information I've received, this, this, and this. And so would you please answer X, Y, and Z? Okay. And we'll be, when will we be getting more detailed information? I know we have the short Tomorrow. bios on them. Tomorrow. Okay. So we have time to review that. Yeah, yeah. you'll absolutely have enough yeah. time. You'll have, I've got all the, their stuff all copied off so far. Okay. I'm finishing up on my final assessment because I think there's some information that I may be able to impart that would be more entertaining than just reading their stuff. Okay. You're going to give us hard copies of everything? Yes, sir. I think that's right. more And effective. those will be in our mailbox tomorrow? Or? No, the police department, so don't leg out if the police department shows up. <laughs> they're, they're only there for Melody. But, um, <laughs> He's um, been but there for before. the rest of the <laughs> delivery packets, um, but they'll give you your packet, and so what you'll have is you'll have my cover email, my cover memo, which will give you some insider tidbits that I have for last. Uh, I'll give you a ranking sheet for all of the applicants that you may or may not want to use. Those are people who have been associated with state hiring processes. It's pretty natural. Um, and then you'll have all the application packet of what they had. And then what you'll have is that you'll have a set of questions once you tell me it's all right, and then it'll have their name emblazoned on it. You'll have that all in your hands because it's much easier, I think. I don't want you showing up at the interviews with your computers. I want you to be actively engaged, so it needs to be paper and in writing. And it's just okay. So what you're saying is that we got to stick to this strictly, and we can't. If you got a situation when somebody's background or whatever that you would like to get more in depth in or to ask them about or we have absolutely time to do that okay. at the end yeah. i'm yeah. just saying it's easier if you go with the flow so that you can see where you are on the time clock and stuff like that it's just easier to go through and kick these out and then and then just be making your notes and say boy i need to ask about that or he answered cheryl and said this this and this and i'm i'm just wondering how does that tie in no you have an absolute right to do that it's just well as i ask is try to get through the formal part of it and then go from there. I, I, you know, this is about, you know, or like I said, we've dealt with the, I've dealt with the technical stuff, and I've talked to their references, and I've vetted them out. This is about relationship and what you think fits best with Salida, et cetera, and that's why these questions are tailored the way they are, because I think that you'll get more of an essence of what the person is, um, and, and so, um, but at the same time, you only have one shot at them. And so you've got to make it uh, that one time uh, work out as best for you. And then we try to shoehorn it into an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes there, whatever, as long as we're fair to everybody. But I sure would never take away from you um, asking the questions you need to feel comfortable with an applicant. Okay. And I know you called the references, but did you talk to anyone else, previous supervisors? Oh, or? yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. It's just, it's just helpful for us. Especially to the poor suckers from Colorado. That you can't hide. I guess we got to make sure that we all understand the the flow that we want to kind of. Yeah. Well, and and I'll go and I'll, go, and I'll go over this again on Friday okay. before. That's why you see on the calendar. Or there'll be calendar in there too. But that's why you have got 15, 20 minutes with us so that I can give you some preparatory stuff. And also on that day is there is a writing assignment that I've asked because you need to see their method of communication and thought processes. So they'll hand that to me on Thursday, and I'll give it to you Friday. Um, assignment. Huh? A homework assignment. <laughs> yeah, and I don't grade it before you get we it. We have this a meet and greet on Thursday, right? Yes, ma'am, at 5 to 7 at the steam plant, hors d'oeuvres, no okay. beer. And um, and then they're with the employees? We are having, our, we're interviewing, the, our department heads are interviewing them on the, before the meet and greet. Before the meet and greet. Yeah, okay. we talked about that today. Okay. So the questions look all right then? Decent I enough? Agree. Okay. <clears throat> and like I say, it doesn't take you out of the box of asking others other things that if it's necessary. Refresh my memories on some of the others before when I was involved in it. Pardon? Some of the questions are, it refreshed my memory as to what we had to ask before when 
Mr. McDonald was chosen. I wouldn't suggest that these questions are out of the whack no. from what you're normally used to. Very good. Yeah. Times of the same Friday morning? Yeah. What that? Yeah, 8 o'clock, I think, start time, and then the first interview would be at 8.30. Um, all of the applicants will be meeting with me prior to um, being victimized by you. And um, what I'll be talking to them is giving them some last minute details, but I also will be quizzing them a little more specifically about the compensation requirements so that I can put together a comparison sheet if necessary. I've already quizzed them as to the acceptability of the current terms, but sometimes some late minute things. Who will be the first person in? I mean, do you, is there um, Ms. Reset will be the first one, Mr. Patterson is second, and Mr. Lorenzen is last. And you're at this great yeah. hour and a half is about 12 to 13 questions, and that should leave you, well, it, it's up to your moderator, which is the Honorable Mayor, but he's not going to have his hammer, so he's going to have to just yell <laughs> real loud. But. Um, Hour and a half to hour and 45 minutes is actually time enough. Sometimes you get somebody that clams up on you in 45 minutes, it seems like forever, but there's other people, um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about some of these things on Friday, but there are other people that could really drag this out to two and a half, three hours. And, you know, but there's a way to control that. Okay, thanks much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Appreciate well, we'll it. see if we're successful. If not, then, then we'll okay. talk about it. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll be talking about it. You anticipate not being here for no. how long? Give that to Hal. Oh, okay. When yeah. should I oh. make oh. plans to? Well, Christian and I was arm wrestling as to whether last night was my last council meeting or not. I got Hal's copy, by the way. Okay, thank you. Last night? Yeah, you huh? see my contract's done on the 17th. Are you oh. serious? <laughs> well, I think we better have an executive session right oh, away. Oh, Jim, you wouldn't need to take that to Hal because I'm going to do all the questions all over and put in the packets. Oh, okay. That's so, in time. fact, if you want to hand them to right. me, I'll throw them away. So, before we leave, though, is that something we need to address as if for some reason there was a problem or whatever that we could retain you or? We will. You want because my question? Yeah. Because I'm the guy. I got to start that way. We want some more. Yeah. 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 If I saw it. Now, one of these questions is the ones that I got so prior. So give them all the ones. Take them all the ones. Because you're going to get them all the ones. Okay. Right. Here, you might as well take this too. Yeah, we'll just have to see. I just think it's terribly important that you just have no message for me because I got informed and they because it's not legal. Really? Why? Why did you? Is this the one for the intersection at 111? Okay, John. I think we have four municipal members and four cameras.